Atten attention, everyone. Can I ask you to start making your way to your tables, please? Can you hear me? Could you hear me? Okay, everyone, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me in the back? John, can you hear me? Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our seventh annual Athena Celebration Luncheon, and we'd like to thank you all for joining us for this exciting event. We know that schedules are very, very busy, and how nice of you to take time out of your schedule to come and help us honor and recognize this year's Athena. My name is Julie Metz, and I'm the Executive Director of the Shelby County Chamber of Commerce. And as a reminder, if you have not already done so, please silence your cell phones during our presentation. We want to thank our event sponsors, major health partners, for their continuing support of this event. We also say thank you to our luncheon sponsors, Indiana Grand Racing and Casino, we appreciate the use of the beautiful facility and the preparation of the delicious meal that we know we're going to enjoy here in just a few minutes. We also have celebration sponsors, and we thank them, Girls Incorporated and PNC Bank. We appreciate your continuing support of this event. To the Athena com Committee, you know, it takes several people to put an event like this together. Um, they are a lot of fun to work with, and i just like to recognize them. If you don't mind, when I mention your name, if you would just stand so everyone knows who you are and, and just have that recognition. Gina Linville, Mona Spaulding, Sherry Talbert, Treva Cunningham, Janet Wallace, Sherry Yarling, Amy Larrison, Teresa Tungate, and Bobby Ebbing. Thank you all very much. And I also want to say thank you to the chamber staff who works very hard making sure that every detail of this event is taken care of. We have Courtney Chapella. Courtney, if you wave to everyone. Jordan England, Jordan still manning the registration table. And we'd also like to take this opportunity to in introduce the newest member of the chamber staff, Whitney Wagner, and I will say she just started today. And if you have not met these individuals, please take the time to introduce yourself to them. Um, they are the backbone of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, they have great customer service, and if there's something that you need and you call the Chamber, they're going to make sure they take care of you. Now I am pleased to introduce Pastor Linda Frische mori of the Evangelical United Church of Christ to offer our invocation. Let us pray. Eternal and holy God, we thank you for gathering us here for this time of celebration. As we share together, touch our spirits with your spirit, that this might be a time of joy and thanksgiving as recognition is given to one who has served this community with faithfulness and commitment. We rejoice this day in recognizing Mary Jo Ferris and the service she has given in Shelby County. We give thanks for her life and her professional and personal accomplishments, which have touched the lives of many in this community and beyond. We celebrate the significant role Mary Jo has demonstrated as a woman in being a model for that which women can achieve. As she has set an example of service, not only through her career, but also by her willingness to volunteer, so also let us serve wherever we find ourselves 
so that the lives of others might be improved and enhanced. This day and in all the days ahead, bless Mary Jo. With joy in our hearts and gratitude in our lives, we give you thanks this day that we had the privilege and opportunity to gather here in this time and in this place. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Now, Tina will be dismissing our tables for lunch. Um, if you will just follow her instructions and enjoy the delicious Italian buffet that has been, been prepared today just for us. Thank you. My name is Martha Mayhood Mertz, founder of Athena International, and it is my privilege and honor to spend some time telling you about the background and the philosophy of Athena. First to define us, we are a nonprofit organization headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, devoted to supporting, encouraging, and honoring women as leaders, inspiring all women to achieve their full leadership potential thus creating a balance in leadership worldwide. The first Athena Award was both created and presented from the Lansing, Michigan Chamber of Commerce more than 25 years ago. We decided that our community was out of balance with regard to leadership, and we wanted to change that. So women and men working together, which has always been the case with Athena, we were inspired by a quote from Plato, what is honored in a country will be cultivated there. There was a great influx of women coming into the work professional world at that time, and we wanted to redefine what leadership looked like from a woman's perspective. Our criteria for great leadership is that one must have achieved the highest level of professional excellence, no matter what the career or professional path is. Also, one must give back to their community in a positive way so that they make a difference. And finally, and most importantly, one must also be someone who opens leadership opportunities for others, particularly for women, so that everyone will have a chance to achieve their full potential. We reached back into Greek mythology for the model and, and found the goddess Athena, who is known for her courage, wisdom, strength, and enlightenment traits we felt all people need on their quest for their leadership path. Each Athena recipient is given a sculpture, a handmade work of art, numbered work of art, made by the original artist, Linda Ackley, in her foundry in northern Michigan. There is a lot of symbolism in this sculpture, the core values that a leader has, 
the polish and poise that a leader uh, generates over a period of time. The, the crystal prism at the top of this sculpture uh, demonstrates the luster and eminence that a leader who has achieved this level of excellence evinces. There are now over 5,000 Athena recipients from across this nation and seven other countries around the world. The most recent new country was Mumbai, India. One of the most significant contributions during these years has been the development of the Athena leadership model, a set of eight traits or characteristics that we found commonly utilized by Athena recipients. These consist of the authentic self, that set of core values, learning, collaboration, relationships, giving back, fierce advocacy, courageous acts, and celebration and joy. Finally, let me personally invite you to attend our annual conference in Chicago each spring. Athena International presents an international award to an outstanding woman whose work has had a national or an international impact. And we also come together both to network and to nourish uh, the spirits, to learn about our own leadership, and to explore ways leadership will be moving as we head into the 21st century. May your leadership continue to expand, and may you and your community continue to flourish. Thank you. I certainly apologize if some of you were surprised when that video came on. It came on kind of sudden, and it actually surprised me a little bit, and I knew it was coming. I hope you enjoyed your lunch, and um, as we look forward to honoring the contributions made by this year's Athena recipient, we are happy to present to you our past Athena Award recipients. We ask them to please stand and remain so until all are recognized. We're going to start with Rose McNeely, Barbara Anderson, Mary Harper, Betsy Stephen, Doreen Wolsifer, Linda Bacon, Carolyn Moybon, and Nisa Hensley. These women have contributed significantly to our community, and we acknowledge their strength and recognize their leadership. Thank you, ladies. When the Athena celebration was initially founded by the Chamber Committee, um, and then brought back again in 2007, we collectively decided that each year a portion of the funds raised from this event would be earmarked to benefit women and girls of Shelby County. Thus, the Woman's Fund was started at the Blue River Career Foundation Center. Many of you have made contributions to this fund in the past. We thank you for your generosity. And here to tell us more about the fund and the Friends of Athena, is Janet Wallace. Well, everything I'm going to say is in your, in your uh, little thingy, <laughs> in your program. Um, Shelby County Women's Fund, located at the Blue River Community Foundation, is to support organizations and programs that serve women and children. Almost any nonprofit organization that is working to improve the lives of Shelby County women and girls may be eligible for a grant from this fund. Eligible activities could be job skills or entrepreneurship training programs addressing violence against women, health, or many others. In your program today, you have the opportunity to be a friend of, of Athena and honor a past, present, or future Athena recipient and support the Shelby County Women's Fund. And congratulations, Mary Jo. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. And we do want to point out that not only does a portion, as we mentioned, of the proceeds from today's 
our, our ticket sales go to this fund, but if you make a contribution in honor of a past, present, or future Athena, that contribution 100% goes to the fund at the Blue River Community Foundation. We did have um, our first year, we did issue a small grant to um, Girls Incorporated that first year. We, we appreciate the things that they're doing there. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Now for the presentation of our 2013 Athena recipient, we are going to introduce someone who knows her well, her son, David. Thanks, Julie. My, uh, my brother couldn't be here today, he's out of state. So when I called him a few days ago and I asked him, is there anything you want me to say on your behalf? He said, let all the fine people know that he's out of state, couldn't be there, but mom's smartest, best looking and favorite son will be doing the talking. So <laughs> his words, not mine. A few days ago when Julie called and asked if I would say a few things to kind of represent my mom, I was talking to her and I said, yeah, that's great. Love to, I know she's excited. I'm anxious to see the hints in the paper. See you Wednesday and I hung up. And then a few minutes later it hit me, I'm going to be talking in front of a lot of people that are highly respected in the community and that I know my mom has a lot of respect for. I better find out or I better dig a little deeper and give these people some information and make their lunch worthwhile because we're all busy people. So I thought of several things and I narrowed it down to two. Well, I, I've got one very, very serious story I wanna share and then I, I'll, I'll end with something a little more humorous. But I thought about the Athena Award and I thought about the qualifications and what it takes. And the first thing that really floated to the surface right away was giving back. And I remember probably 35 years or so ago being six, seven, eight years old. And I remember the, the phone constantly ringing and it would be the dispatcher of the police department calling and asking for my mom. And we would, mom, it's for you. I mean, 99% mom, it's for you, mom, it's for you. Take the, take the call. Most of the time it was a female victim needing help and some incident happened and as most of us would probably agree, those incidents seem to be at 2 a.m. or 6 a.m. There's never a noon incident that happens it seems like in the police force. But they, they're always unawkward times and family times and I, I remember several holiday, Christmas Eve, Christmas and getting that lovely phone call from the local dispatcher and I thought it's so right to, I mean, it's this, this award, and you look at the, the, all the respected ladies at that table, it's not an award that you just look at the last 12 months and, and it, you just earn. So I, I thought it's important to look back 30 plus years and say, you know, she started giving back from when I was a young kid, and I just, I thank you for showing me how to give back. The second story that came to mind I've never been, in my career of banking, I've never been big on titles. You know, I, I'm a banker, plain and simple. And it, it occurred to me, why, why do I have this? Some people, it, it's so important to them what their business card says. And thinking through, I think it's because of my brother and my mom that I don't, I have never given a lot of emphasis beside, behind somebody's business card title. And I think it goes back to when I was in high school, I remember um, we, I grew up, we grew up in a, on Grandview Drive, a little horseshoe edition, and I remember coming home and my dad and my brother, and I think there were some neighbor kids, we all got there about the same time. For whatever reason, end of the day, we all seemed a, a small group of us, seven, eight people were gathering, and I believe it was the same day that my mom got promoted to detective. I think it was right around that day because I remember her going on and on about this promotion and you know she's telling two high school kids, my brother and I, about this promotion, being detective, the power that it comes 
and you know, I can do this now, I can arrest this person, I can, you know, all kinds of, I can't even remember, I'm using my words, not hers, but she was very excited about this, and picture a little differently than, than my brother looks today, pretty, you know, fo typical high school football player, strong, working out every day, and she's telling us the story, and um, I think my brother had, had just, I've had enough, you know, I've had enough, it's great you're a detective, and she kept going on, and very happy, and excited, well, my dad and I are standing there, and next thing I knew, I see this little five-foot fireball handcuffed behind her back on the curb of Grandview Drive, and my brother like, took it the car. I remember the business? I think it said lieutenant on it. Took and just ripped it, and you know, there's your title, mom. And like, yeah, I mean, just kind. And it just it, that that has always stuck with me, thinking, you know what? There's not a hell hell of a lot behind a business car. There's a detective sitting on the curb out there, handcuffed. So. Anyway, that's, I, I fault that story as me never putting a whole lot, and, and I guess that's, um, to, to the point is, it doesn't matter um, who people are as far as their title. We need to, she's taught me, you need to treat everyone, and I'm still learning this today, you need to treat everyone the same, no matter what their title in life is, where they come from, how much money is in their savings account, whatever, you just, everyone should in my opinion, and I've got this from her, she should wake up knowing that, wake up treating people fairly and honestly, and I thank you for teaching me that lesson. And the last thing, I know I'm running over my time, just thank you for shining and showing me the right way to go. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, Mary Jo, in addition to everything else, you've obviously done a tremendous job raising your children. <laughs> and, you know, I, can't, I, I have to take exception a little bit, David, with what you said. I can't imagine any of us that know Mary Jo could ever imagine that she'd go on and on about <laughs> it. Now, you've heard some um, wonderful contributions made uh, firsthand um, from David, her son. And we now have someone here um, to give us another perspective. I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Danny Overlay. He is the president of the Professional Police Officers Credit Union and a very good friend of Mary Jo Ferris. Good afternoon. Uh, first, like Julie, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be here and David for the invitation. And before I start my remarks, I'd like to congratulate the table in front of me. Uh, a lot of years of service to this community. And I think if the community is looking for a way to say what does Shelby County look like, it looks like that table. So congratulations, ladies. It is my extreme pleasure to be here today to honor a, uh, a very good friend of mine, Mary Jo. Uh, I met Mary Jo in the 80s and immediately knew that we'd have a long, lifelong friendship. Later in the 80s, the Fraternal Order of Police identified a need to have a dedicated group of people to respond to critical incidents involving law enforcement officers and their families. I was asked to chair that initiative. I created a list of traits that I wanted in team members. I wanted someone who was trustworthy, caring, compassionate, considerate, and thoughtful. So I went to the dictionary and there was a picture of Mary Jo. <laughs> Mary Jo came on our team as an initial member and continues to be available to our law enforcement family. Little did we know when we put the team together that would be activated three years in a row in Shelby County. And I know many of you remember that. Stacy Aye was killed on April the 8th, 1996, in an automobile accident. And again on April 25th, 1997, Trooper Andrew Winsenreed was killed by a semi on I-74. Unfortunately, again, 
on April 17, 1998, so three years in a row in April. Conservation Officer Carl Kelly died in the line of duty during a water rescue training exercise in the southern part of the state. And then again, most recently in 2007, Shelby County, Gary Henderson of Shelby, Shelbyville Police Department was killed on October the 10th. It commands a lot of resources to honor a hero who was killed in the line of duty. And I guess many of you in this room have been recipients of an art that Mary Jo has perfected, the art of procurement. I refer to her as the perfect scrounger. No matter what we needed to honor our hero, Mary Jo knew the right person to ask. And I would imagine if I went table to table, many of you are sitting in this room. You stood up to the plate. Mary Jo knew who, who to ask, and our heroes were honored. When I respond throughout the country, when officers are killed in the line of duty, they'll ask me what my needs are. The first thing I'll ask is I want the Mary Jo of your community at my side. As we all know, Mary Jo is a kind-hearted person. In 2004, my grandson Charlie was born. Charlie had a serious defect of the heart which required two open heart surgeries in his first year. This is also the year that Mary Jo had convinced my wife and I and Charlie's mom and dad that we needed to move to Shelby County. We did. We now shall call Shelby County our home. So we purchased some acreage on the northern part of the county. And Charlie's baptism occurred while he was uh, in the hospital. He received a tree from a very close friend. We called the tree of life. Charlie's mom and dad wanted that planted in northern Shelby County. We did that as a ceremony. Little did we know, as city folk come from Indianapolis, that that was farmland and there's no water out there. So here's this small tree. Mary Jo, along with some of you and her co-workers, watered that tree every day while we spent days and nights in Riley Hospital. That's who Mary Jo is. You know, I'm going to conclude with the saying, behind every good woman, there's a good man. Well, there is. That's David. I can tell you over 20 years ago, I start calling David, Saint David. <laughs> because the ones of us that know Mary Jo, that he has to be a saint <laughs> to be married to her for over 40 years. <laughs> Seriously, Mary Jo, congratulations. What a great table that you'll be sitting at next year. You'll compliment this county as each of these ladies have done. Thank you for being my friend. And on behalf of law enforcement throughout the country, thank you for everything you've done. We love you. You know, I think each one of us here realizes what a gem she is, but she just keeps shining and shining more and more. Yeah, thank you, Danny, very much. Um, now we are pleased to have Jack Horner. Jack Horner is the president and CEO of Major Hospital, and he is here to present the Athena sculpture. Jack? Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. Major Hospital, Major Health Partners, very proud to sponsor with Shelby County Chamber of Commerce, the Athena Award. Obviously, Major Health Partners made up of more than 800 women. These women are the backbone of our institution, ranging from physicians and nurses, laboratory technicians, pharmacists, and the hospitals. Very, very proud to sponsor with Shelby County Chamber of Commerce. I'd also like to recognize Julie the work she does throughout the year for Shelby County and for the businesses that we have in here, Julie. When, when we're asked to look at awards like this, um, 
around and which recognizes women who excel in their professional business. And we've seen that, Mary Jo, with you as many things as a trailblazer. First in many, many things throughout the years. First Shelbyville police officer, female. The awards go on and on of what you won from your professional accomplishments. I know your family and others, your community, very proud of you. You look at where we have in service to the community and your many boards you've served on, the groups you've helped, Senior Services, Salvation Army, many that you've been involved with on that. In your service of what you do in your work life has always crossed over. You've always been involved in service to others, whether it's as a police officer or whether as an elected official serving the community as recorder. And we also know in that area the tremendous job you've done in that, the elevation you put in that office. Very, very proud of you on that. And as far as the, the characteristics of opening the path for others, you just look. You look at your son David on that. Val couldn't be here. You know, David, last time I talked to Val, <laughs> the adjective he used to describe you, I didn't think was good lucky. Maybe it was another, <laughs> I may have misheard that, but in, in, I, I, yeah, I guess you did <laughs> <laughs> But I know you're very proud of them. I know your husband very proud. That shows as much as anything, the development around the family, the values you've imparted, you could hear the words from his heart as he spoke on that. An opening path to others from a leadership starts with the family first. And you've done that through those times. I've known you and your family a long time. You've been a very good friend. You've been a lifelong friend of what we had. My father was always very, very fond of you. I know back 68 or so, he married you on that. He always spoke very highly of you. He would also be very proud of you right now. So please welcome, and I'm very honored to announce, the winner of our 2013 Athena Award recipient, Mary Jo Farrell. I want to warn you, I don't talk very much, <laughs> and I promise to have you out of here by four. <laughs> but for those of you who got to go to work, I'm going to cut this short. All of you in this room are a blessing to me, all of you. Uh, to my family, here on the front row, I'd like to have my brother and my sister and their family right here on the front row stand up. I got a niece and a great niece, Rebecca, here on the front row. Thank you for coming. We don't, uh, my niece Michelle and I don't really stay in close communications, but this morning when I got here, she told me she didn't know about this until she seen it at Starbucks. <laughs> so there you are, okay? <laughs> to the table out there in the dead center, you have been my idol of women for a long, long time. And I'm honored to be able to join that group. Honored. To my right, is my son, as you've already met, even though I'm going to disown him after today. <laughs> my daughter-in-law and her mother, if they'd please stand. It's Michelle and Barb. Michelle, of course, Ferris and Barb Thomas, which we treasure. We get along great in friendship and in family. I don't think she's asked me to leave her home or anything in the few years she's been married to David. I think she's probably asked David and Val to leave, but, you know. To my far right, please stand for my fellow recorders who's traveled afar to come to this today as a surprise. 
Pam Morgan, uh, Pam Kivett, the Morgan County. I'm a little nervous. That's Pam. She's your recorder. Also next to her is Deb Preston, the um, uh, Randolph County, and Deb Tiemann, the Richmond or Wayne County. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> to my sorority, Claire in the back, if they'd stand, I probably can't see you all. I got some lights on me, but the Delta Feta Tall sorority back there came as a surprise also. And you're thinking, why am I introducing these people? They are my backbone. Between my family and my friends, I would be lost and in trouble if I didn't have community support, as Danny said. And as some of you know, I am a mooch. I am thrive on if you can get it free, get it. <laughs> Don't pay for it. Sorry. You know, especially if it's for your community. If it's for your community, if you can get it free, the paybacks are very rewarding. I have co-workers here that I want to acknowledge because they snuck around and I didn't know they were coming. So if Kathy and Mary could stand, Kathy Plunk is some of your treasures office. Mary Kinnett helps out there during tax time. Uh, Donna Cook, our HR director. 